Welcome everybody to I the Serpent Tarot for another pick a card reading. Today's reading is where are you about to level up? Where are you about to finish off, complete something or just move to a new and higher stage in your life? So this could be around career, around creativity, around your love life, around your spirituality, some combination of all of those things, an athletic achievement, whatever it might be. So we're basically asking spirit to sort of point out where you've reached a certain level of achievement, ability, skill, understanding, knowledge, whatever it might be to level up in something in your life. So I'm going to cover with that the sort of general areas that it's in, what are the kind of key issues around it, what's in your hands, what's sort of like also in the hands of others or the environment you're in, both with tarot and with oracle cards. So hopefully it'll be a fun, interesting and positive journey. So I'll put down the numbers to make the poll choice. And just before I go through the poll choice section, I just want to note that I do have the capacity to do personal readings now. So if you would like a private reading, no pressure, nobody's expected to want one, but if you would like one, then go to the link to my Etsy store that's in the description box below or on my about page on this channel. And that's the only way that you can get a reading with me. So don't get sort of fooled by any scammers. I'm not aware at this point in time of anybody impersonating me, but apparently it's very common in the online tarot community. So lots of tarot readers have to deal with that. So I, I would guess at some point I will as well too. So I just want to let everybody know that's how you get a reading from me, not any other way. So I want to make sure that you don't get scammed by anybody if you are looking for a reading from me. Okay, so moving on. The poll choice, what I've done is in each reading there will be a different tarot deck used. So I've taken the world card from each of the tarot decks as part of the choice, you know, with the terms of the imagery and so forth. If you're familiar with the decks, you may choose for that reason or for the image that you see. You might choose by the numbers, etc. Could be anything. But the reason that I've chosen the world is it seems to me that what we're talking about here when we're leveling up, we're talking about having achieved a certain degree, as I say, of skill or knowledge or whatever it might be. And it could be knowledge in a relationship. It could be knowledge that, yes, this is the one and we're now going to take it to the next level. But there's almost been one full revolution of the major arcana from that early sort of innocence and beginning through to the completion energy of the world to then get you ready for the next level. So that's the logic of using the world card. So for pile number one, we have the world card from the Epica Tarot. For pile number two, we have the world card from the White Fly Tarot. For pile number three, we have the world card from the Broken Mirror Tarot. And for pile number four, we have the world card from the Art of Adventure Tarot. So as I say, the imagery, the deck may help you choose. It could be the number that you choose by. You are more than welcome to go to more than one reading. There may be more than one area in which your life is about to level up and step up. So you do you, as I always say. When you know what reading or readings you want to go to, as always, I've got the timestamps in the description box below, and I'll see you there. Welcome, part one, to your reading. So we have some spiritual cards, some indications of the type of areas or type of energy around where you might be leveling up with sort of music and also successful people as sort of as i say indications of the type of energy we might be talking about and some astrology energy just to give me the first sort of sense before we move to tarot about what kind of leveling up we're talking about and for you i feel like this is really stepping into who you are creatively or in your personal brand or in the way that you present yourself in the world, possibly after and, and in doing so, grabbing success, grabbing the enjoyment of life, being more connected emotionally and also materially to your life to bring through a new vision, something that is truly you. After maybe feeling very suppressed or boxed in or or finding it difficult. Now, the reason that I say that is it's interesting. We have the universal child and the new vision cards around spiritual energy with this. The universal child is very much making me feel that many of the people who've come to this reading have felt that inner wound for the, the inner child, the, 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 the kind of early ambitions or something that you've been dealing with. I think that many of you around, as I say, career creativity or even in expressing who you are, and there is a very strong energy of that here, you have had to struggle. You're, this hasn't come easy, particularly with a grand cross. Grand cross 
is a number of squares, four squares that are then connected with two oppositions in a chart. And the energy around that is tricky because it is very action oriented, but it's very polarizing at the same time. So you've got all this sort of like impetus to action change something new, but equally a feeling of, am I going to be opposed? Am I going to be able to deal with it? How do I turn the activity of this and the, the tension into something that creates something new, something that is really resonant, something that I can work with, as opposed to feeling like everywhere I turn, there's sort of like an opposition or, or a difficulty or or a block in some way. So I feel that most of the people coming here, you are leveling up by moving past needing the approval of other people. You're getting through a gatekeeper of some sort. <coughs> Excuse me. Could be an industry gatekeeper. If you are a you know, a creative person and you need to sort of go through, you know, a book publishing industry or, you know, a film production company or something like that. It, it, I feel like there's a breakthrough coming through with a new vision that you have. And the interesting thing about it, it is both colourful and flashy and interesting and, and marrying opposites in some way, but also very emotionally and probably kind of societally relevant because with Bob Dylan we have an energy there of sort of an amazing poet but also an amazing social presence you know bringing in you know, one of the sort of key sort of voices of the 60s and bringing in the counterculture and all of that kind of thing so there's definitely a sense around this of deep emotional connection whatever you do but there's also flash and there's difference and there's new vision and there's there is the bringing of opposites because Takashi Murakami, and I may not be pronouncing his name correctly, is a really interesting artist who both linked, as they say, highbrow and lowbrow art together, connected a lot with other artists, supports a lot of other artists and so forth, has a strong humanitarian level, but but is sort of like not about the snobbery and not about what was always done. It's sort of crashing through with something new. So I feel like that very much picks up this Grand Cross energy and uses it as an action and uses it. Tak Takashi really uses himself with his colourful clothes and so forth also as an indication of who he wants to be and all the alternatives because apparently he likes to do cosplay. So, so there's something in this about you using a balance of opposites and that and connecting them in some way in a new way that heals some inner wound and allows you to connect to your emotions and and communicate those in a way that brings in the sort of life that you would like something that feels stable and with Taurus you have to be a bit stubborn about it you know, like you have to be stubborn about your vision even when it isn't understood at all you know to start with you are going to find it you have are having this breakthrough it is ready to happen or has just happened and that's what you're stepping into so either way this energy is being used positively by looking at it's almost like looking into the core of what was the opposition to what you were doing and finding the way to balance that out some of you may in fact be incredible negotiators mediators that sort of thing with this sort of energy as well too but for most of you i feel like this is something very creative something that's very true to you in whatever form it's coming out and it's healing old wounds where your difference was a problem at one point but now it's actually going to be the thing that brings through the new vision. So that's the energy that I feel around, around this leveling up. It's you really stepping to who you are and making that part of your brand, making that part of what people see and, and somehow combining opposites and tensions and arguments in a way that actually works. So let's see with the tarot a little bit more information about this. Firstly, just generally around what you're leveling up with and then we're going to have a look at what's within your power to to bring to the table and then also what are some external factors around this so firstly just generally my goodness wow okay you are definitely stepping up. Definitely. Whatever this new vision is, it's really powerful. And it's really going to, I think, be very, very fortunate for you. As I say, whether it's, it doesn't have to be classically creative, but there's something that is creative, different, flashy, balancing of opposites. There's something like that that you really are having a breakthrough with. And it is to heal something emotional. What you heal in yourself emotionally with the King of Cups reversed 
is in fact something that will heal others. I am getting for some of you, it may even heal a relationship around a parental figure. So there could be almost proving something to a parental figure, whether it literally then means, you know, if there's been tension that, that you are uh, more aligned or whether it's just that you kind of finally can sort of say, see, you know, there was something to what I was doing. There's an energy around that with the King of Cups reversed. But you've got the High Priestess, the Magician, the Star and the Wheel of Fortune. You are an exceptional manifester. <laughs> like you are very, very psychic, very, very able to use a multitude of skills. This is this Takashi Murakami as well coming into it. So there's something like that very, very clearly for you. And with the High Priestess and the Star, it's bringing not only new vision and new hope to yourself, but to other people. It, its time has come. Your time has come, actually, with the Wheel of Fortune. So certainly anybody who's come to this reading has come to the right reading. I think you will know. I mean, I think that's why I keep getting this is the really strong energy that I get around this. Bob Dylan, I feel, is more an indication of some sort of poetry or some sort of creativity and so forth that's around it. So, But you are... You are something, I've got to say, Paul. <laughs> whatever you're doing, whatever your new vision is, there's a lot of depth to it, a lot of sort of psychic depth to it, a lot of sort of like new vision, new hope, so forth as well. So this is definitely your time. All right, so let's have a look. Given that, I mean, it doesn't really get better than that, to be honest. <laughs> but, but look, given that, let's have a look at what's within your control and then we'll have a look at what is externally impacting this. I mean, good fortune is, is externally impacting this and we are going to look at fortune energy later so it will be interesting to see whether any sort of challenges come up with that or whether it's showing smooth sailing. You've had a hell of a lot of challenges but I think this has potentially really made you grow and, and put you in the driver's seat, so to speak. But firstly, what can you bring to this? So the first thing this says is that you are bringing like 99.999% of this. this. This is really something about you. This is you, the inner child, whatever this vision was that you had coming out of something new. This is you. Because with the three of wands, the five of wands and the four of wands all reversed, their cards, particularly the three of wands and the four of wands that tend to be about sort of connecting with others, sort of connecting the vision, building it with others and so forth. It looks to me like if you've attempted to do that in the past, it really hasn't worked. And you've kind of come to, to terms with that with the five of wands reverse. So this is not about fighting with people about the vision. This is about taking it through yourself and using your ability to manifest, your ability to bring in abundance and so forth. And there's definitely something about parental stuff with some of you. Some of you will heal a rift with parents or will prove something to parents through this in some way. You're very pragmatic about this too. You have a lot of idealism around it and your vision is very idealistic, but it's also pragmatic. This again, Taka, Takashi Murakami, like very much a feeling like, he, as I said, he sort of brought together high art and low art. It was sort of like a mashing up of something in a way that other people hadn't done it, you know, and, and that's, there's something like that energy about you and there's something very pragmatic about what he did as well. So you're pragmatic, but still idealistic, but you know that you need to do it on your own. You know this is not something that you can necessarily do in collaboration, at least at the moment. You may eventually find that you do do that, but at this point in time, this is very much yours. So let's see how the external world is impacting on it then, because I feel like it's not its not sort of something where you level up that is that it's you and a few other people doing it. saying the same thing. This is a very, very strong message. It's definitely saying this is, you know, like letting go of painful things, particularly from the past. Many of you, this is something you probably, as I said, wanted to do from childhood. It's something very true to your identity and true to your sort of creative spirit that wasn't understood. You are letting go, like that, that, what will be happening, and I think the main card for the outside world is the Wheel of Fortune here. I think this, your time has come. But what will be happening is that you will be healing some of that. But it almost happens, almost like either there's going to be people who actually say, I get it, I understand it now, including maybe some parents around people who've come to this reading. Or it's like you're just going to be sloughing that off. It's no longer impacting on you. 
you've you've done the work to disconnect from those that were emotionally not helping you or not supporting you. There may be, as time goes on, some money around this to help you. You know, this could be, you know, if you were doing something creative, you know, you could do a Kickstarter or something like that. With the Nine of Pentacles, it suggests that there could be funding and support for you. But it's more like that than a collaborator. So this feels more like you have a vision, you bring something forward, and money comes. And that is in a different basis, like a business relationship, or as I say, you know, potentially patrons on a on a Kickstarter campaign or something like that. So money comes from outside, but not the rest of it because because there's too much there was too much disappointment. But you're about to break through that, like big time, about to break through that. So that's beautiful. That's really, really positive. So let's have a look at it in a little bit more detail. Like what I wanted to do firstly was use the heart code oracles for some energy around relationships, some energy around lifestyle and energy around career, because I thought it's going to be in one or more of those that any kind of leveling up is occurring. So this may pick up things that, that are challenging that need to also be brought into play, or it may pick up more about the energy that's moving you to the next level. So let's see what the heart code oracles have to say. realization around relationships yes i think you've realized i think that you have seen that there is a pattern where people haven't understood you maybe competed with you you were different different in your family different around your friends different in the workplace you've had the realization you know that there is something that is intrinsically you now it doesn't stop you ultimately from having a love relationship or from you know working collaboratively later but this time is yours this time is yours pile one we also have Letting go, yeah, and so you've let go. You've let go of a hell of a lot, whether you've sort of done a whole bunch of shadow work around all of this or whether you've just had the realisation in the end that that sometimes the only way eventually to get people to see is to demonstrate it by doing. Like it, you could talk to your blue in the face with some of the people that I think have been around you and they just wouldn't get it. You've got to be your own person, you know, like the Takashi sort of feeling around it. Let's see around lifestyle, how this is the energy around your lifestyle as a result of this. Participate. I think that's participate in your own growth, your own journey, your own sort of thing. But I think eventually you may open the doors to let people in and you may participate in other things. Like it doesn't have to. So I'm saying I don't think that this has to stop you from having a love relationship or even friendships. I think it's just so you can still participate on those levels. But this is something that is yours. If you've come to the right reading, you'll know what it is because you've already got all the pieces in the jigs already. And we also get pattern. Okay, so participate but don't get caught in the patterns of the past. So possibly one of the things that held you back before was wanting to fit in, not wanting to be different, because there is something very different about you. So I think like realizing that you can participate and connect with others without getting into those patterns where you give away some of your power, I think is important. Let's see how this plays out in career. Change. So there's a change coming around your career. So I think many of you, this is around career creativity in some way, but there's change coming through. The wheel is turning, and I think it's very positive. There's nothing negative coming off this. And opportunity, yeah, there's opportunity coming. And it could be around money. It could be that once you sort of get out, you put your new vision out, that out, then money starts to come through. Opportunities start to come through. But you've just got to take that step. You've just got to back you. You've got to know that what you've got, say, with that Bob Dylan energy is, is strong enough and resonant enough to bring people in, in whatever form this is. As I say, you don't have to be a classically creative person. You could just be doing something new in your workplace. This, I, I, it could be around relationship, but I don't actually think this is. I think, I think this is around you, who you are. If it relates ultimately to a love relationship, it could be potentially that you you are you have preferences that are different to what people you know consider the, the sort of you know norm or whatever. It could be something different or something your family didn't approve of. So that's possible, and you you are separating out from that view so that you can go into your own. But I just feel for most people this is much more about something creative, something career wise, something about who you are in the world. In terms of your personal brand that that's the energy that's very strong from this so we're also going to look with 
with oracle cards now around the same sort of energy we looked at here which is around what's internal and what's external so we know from the tarot that internally you've had this realization you have to let go of the opinions of others participate and connect but don't get caught in that pattern you know that internally we'll see what else is showing up around internal energies for you and then we're going to use a couple of fortune decks around external and then we'll finish off with some spiritual and astro chakra advice to bring it all together so let's first look at some energies internally that will help you level up. Pleasure. Yeah, enjoy. Enjoy what you're doing. And that goes back to that Taurian energy. I always think of Taurus as the good life. That doesn't mean that all Taurians have, you know, trouble-free lives or anything. But Taurus is the, is the sign to me of like sort of, what do you say, wine, women and song. That kind of sense of like what is it that really makes you enjoy life you know what are the things the pleasures of life the, the, the material earthy things what what would a spirit have decided to come and be in this world for to experience you know, that there, there is something about taking pleasure in what you do enjoying it just enjoying it for its own sake because it is going to work it is going to be powerful but you also need to enjoy it and your own enjoyment i'm getting is infectious that is part of what draws people to you and then we also have the masculine Okay, so there's something about this, you know, there's a lot of water energy in this, which is sort of divine feminine, but there's also the masculine. I think this is getting out and, and taking action. If we think about the masculine as divine masculine, not as gender, this is not about gender. You don't have to be a man or identify as a man or anything like that, but the divine masculine is about taking action. And that is actually the ultimately best way to use that grand cross energy, because Squares and oppositions are not always bad. They are, they, are, they are aspects of tension, action. They require you to do something. So enjoying it, but taking the action, taking the step, this is the thing, you know, like being ambitious. As I say, you have everything you need. Absolutely. Okay, so let's also look at sort of having got the masculine there. I've also got a deck that is about color and sort of goddess energy. So let's see what else we have around what is internally in you that you can leverage for your leveling up indigo discovery intuition perception i'm going to put this over this side because it makes me think of the new vision you are and, and look with the high priestess and the magician you're highly psychic there's something highly intuitive about this even even though i feel for most people coming here this is actually going to show up more in something creative or something in your career or personal brand there are some you could potentially make a career out of something spiritual you know whatever your particular spiritual sort of proclivities are you could potentially do that but in any case there's a great deal of intuition and perception that you bring to this and that discovery energy that sort of sense of the new vision and burgundy ambition oh no respect yeah you need that's the only thing you need Spirit is saying you have everything, you have the skills, you have the ability, the time is right, you're ready, you, you've understood something about how to mash things up and do something different in your space, whatever that is, and, and kind of really take attention. But you've got, to, you've got to activate the inner ambition, the inner masculine, while still using your you know, feminine too and the intuition and so forth. But you really, this is a time to act. Leveling up at this point is, is telling your story in some way. So let's see with a couple of decks around the fortune energy. So this is more external. And so what I mean by fortune decks is you could argue that tarot is a fortune deck in as much as you, know, you can use it predictively. But it, it tends to be just as much a psychological or meditative tool. And I find that it often works more around sort of self-development and around free will and choice and information. When I use fortune decks, it doesn't mean that anything is set in stone. But there are certain classic decks that are more about... I feel the external energies that are impacting on something. So, so to some degree, it's what you can't just control yourself. Though as a magician, you probably control quite a bit, to be honest. But we'll have a look and just see what fortune, external fortune energy is. We know that you're letting go of disappointments and that there's likely to be money coming in. And as I say, we know with the Wheel of Fortune that, that you know, like the external is operating well. But we just want to see if there's anything like either extra positive to bear in mind or something that could be a warning to sort of help you as you as you take your inner ambition and and work with it so 
we have the talisman. You are destined to succeed. There you go. This is so clear, pile one. So clear. Okay. So we know that regardless of whatever else we get around fortune, you're going to you're going to surmount these obstacles. If if obstacles come up, it's just to help you be able to do that. Then we have the shield. You are safe from harm. Yeah, because I think that most of you have gone through a bit, particularly in childhood or you know early stages in career. There was sort of something that really damaged the inner child and the inner voice, but you're about to come out roaring like a lion. And we have the hourglass. Time is of the essence. Yeah, it's time. It's time. The wheel is turning for you. There's something, I think, there's something that you're thinking of doing, something that you're thinking of taking out into the world or whatever. It's a good time to be doing it. The stars are aligning quite literally for you. Let's also look at the Lenormand deck for another couple of cards, just some other external energy potentially around this for you gentlemen so that could suggest it could be picking up the the divine masculine but this is around more external things so it suggests that there's going to be a person either who is is male or identifies as male or may potentially have very divine masculine sort of traits. this could be picking up this nine of pentacles i think for many of you there may be someone who's a sponsor a patron or something like that coming towards you so there's somebody, there's a person that's important in this. And it's not a person you're collaborating with, as I say, because that's not the energy of this. This is a person that might, you know, give you seed funding or or you know, be an agent, for instance, for something that you're doing, that kind of energy. And we have letter, news is coming. News is coming that will will if you are sitting there thinking, oh yeah, I'm kind of I feel it maybe, but I don't know, I'm not sure. News is coming that will actually trigger this, which will make you know, which will make you realise how ready you are to do whatever it is you're doing. You may in fact hear from this person, as I say, if you were a writer and you're looking for an agent, then it's likely that you're going to get an agent, that kind of energy, just as an example. Okay, so to finish off, I want to draw a goddess card for you. So just some other energy around this in terms of spiritual support and then we will use the astro chakra cards for just bringing the energies overall together so your goddess card is sophia knowing oh my goodness okay so sophia is wisdom sophia is direct to the source in Gnosticism, Sophia, in, in many ways, was the, was the mother of the demiurge which created the earth. So there is a real sense of like the lineage through through sort of ancient mysticism here, really knowing you know what you need to do, having the wisdom. You are bringing out something that is a very strong new vision. This picks up the sort of spiritual stuff. Certainly, if you are doing something in the spiritual realm, you're absolutely on course for doing something new, breakthrough type of energy. But as I say, it doesn't have to be that. But but there is a great deal of wisdom around you. This is probably why you're safe from harm and you're going to succeed. I mean, with Sophia behind you. So last but not least, let's just pull three Astro Chakra cards to bring the energy together for you. But seriously, as I said from the beginning, like I couldn't get much better than this for leveling up, I've got to say. We have the Root Chakra, the Root Chakra, and then the solar plexus. To me, that's the journey you're on. I feel like the root chakra showing up twice there is this inner child. This inner child that was sort of not understood or, or suppressed in some way. And this is like having moon and Pluto conjunct. So this is the, the really transformative emotional thing that you've gone through. And you've moved from just wanting security into being able to renew and do something. There's some profound healing that you've gone through psychologically emotionally all of those things this is what's setting you up to be able to do this and to move into your own power and communicate it in some way with mercury there self-esteem you become the example of what it is in a sense you show to the world there's something in this journey you're, you're moving towards being seen accepted communicating your communication skills are very very strong again picking up bob dylan amazing poetry for instance but whatever it is, you're moving out of that sense of potentially lack and having to just survive into thriving. And that, that's your levelling up. So as I say, it's a wonderful set of cards. That's the, I, I really, really wish everybody the very best who's come to this because I think that in many of you are going to do some really groundbreaking things in the very near future. So watch for that information, watch for that time and get ready to act and be as ambitious as hell because you're meant to be. You're meant to succeed. So I hope that this resonates. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. 
Beyond that, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. So we have a couple of cards to have sort of icons from, from sort of successful parts of the world and creative parts of the world to give some energy around what this levelling up may be, some spiritual information and also some astrological and numerological information. You are very interesting as a group, I would say, because you're sort of a... There's something in this which is a sort of a strange combination of getting to the depths on an almost forensic, unafraid, you know, courageous sort of level and powerful level. But also I'm being able to do it from a high level perspective. It's sort of like it's almost like looking at an e a combination of an eagle flying above the sky and and some sort of deep sea diver, you know, into the sea and into the depths of the ocean. You you are a weird combination of those two things, which is partly what is, is making you powerful with 22 as a, a power number. So there is a there is a great deal of depth and power to you. But when I look at the energies of these two spiritual areas, for instance, with unearth the earth, it's saying you're part of a process of unearthing the roots of fear from humanity to an awakened consciousness. So this is getting to the depths. And then we have Scorpio and we have PJ Harvey. Like that combination together is completely unafraid to walk into the shadow completely able to look at it and without blinking and so there's a side of you that is like that something that you're leveling up to whether it's in a social cause which it could be here or political or it could be creative it could be a career it could even be an extraordinarily powerful relationship but one that goes both to the depths and is also kind of detached as well it's a very interesting energy but one part of you is this that side of the coin so the, the depths, as I say, and the, the, the detail and the, the lack of fear, like incredible courage I'm getting from this. But the other side is a sort of a combination here with Steve Jobs, which, you know, in AI and sort of Apple and all that kind of thing, that sort of sense of like the technological and detached, talking about retreat, retreating from situations that are not in harmony with your soul. There's a kind of a a course correction or a balancing, an internal balancing that you do having gone into the depths of being able to detach and see it from this higher level perspective and then act with Aries, be in the world in some way. I do think that most of the people here you're leveling up to the next level in a, in a job, into a leadership role, into a business or you know, into a political or social cause or something that requires this depth of feeling and, and capacity to look at as I say, the shadow without blinking, but also requires a degree of being able to then step back and say, what does this look like on a on a high level perspective, a spiritual perspective, a utilitarian perspective, that kind of thing. So there's something, and I think it is around your ambition, who you are in the world, and being new, bringing in the new. Aries is the first sign in the zodiac, so it's a bit of a groundbreaker normally, which also picks up this Steve Jobs. But your power comes from balancing the two things. You are leveling up because you can do what not many people can do and that is look at both sides of this so that you can then potentially harmonize them or bring them into something new so i do feel for most of you this is around career or leadership or i mean it could be around technology science all those sorts of things but but with a sort of forensic level but i feel it's in that thing it doesn't feel too much like relationship energy it feels more you look more like as I say, it's like you're kind of like the combination of a mystic and a shaman on a spiritual level. It's a very interesting energy. So let's see what tarot has to tell us. It's really interesting that you chose the white fly tarot, if that's the reason that you came here, because there's a kind of a similar energy to the white fly tarot in a way. It has strange sort of characters in it and so forth, but it also has this almost alien feeling about it. And I mean alien is in the sense of like higher perspective. There's something about that with you. Some of you may I'm getting be star seeds or something like that. There's something something quite different about you in the way that you can see the bigger perspective but you can also walk into the shadow. So let's get a little bit more detail on what this actually looks like. So we're going to start firstly with some more detail on what this leveling up is. Then we're going to look at what's within your control, what comes from you, and then also what is coming from the outside that is not necessarily as much in your control. So firstly, a bit more information on the actual levelling up process.
Yeah, a lot of you, this is about a cause or something or about what you think is right, a kind of intellectual process. Even even going into the depths has a certain, as I say, forensic or sort of psychoanalytical sort of feeling to it. So there's something about that and bringing things into balance and the intellect. Many of you may be potentially sort of leveling up by going to the next level of a qualification at sort of university or something like that. Some of you may be literally going into the law and taking this capacity to get into the detail, see what's really going on, and then have a detached intellectual approach that you know makes you a formidable, formidable sort of barrister, for instance, that kind of thing. There's that sort of energy potentially. There may have been a separation from someone that is triggering some of this with two of cups reversed. It could also be that you've you've realized that that what you do is very unusual and so it kind of isn't going to be understood by everybody. But it's interesting with the Hierophant and the Magician. So again, it feels like to me the Hierophant is almost this sort of like the, the theoretic and the Magician is the getting into the depths. You are a very interesting energy. If you're doing this spiritually, you're very, very developed. There's definitely something about a business or or a career or something material around this. You're meant to take this capacity to be both things. This is the thing. You are leveling up because you can be two things at once and they seem to be opposites. So for some of you, as I say, it's going to be forensic level depth and the higher level perspective. But for it could be anything that, that you're almost like two opposites in one. Like people might see you as a bit of a paradox in a way. But, but it is actually very finely calibrated and you know when you, you can switch between each almost have an internal dialogue switching between each. You might even have that. You might even almost talk to yourself in a sense, but it's but it's a dialogue. It's not it's not just you talking to the walls sort of thing. So it's both those sides of your personality. But the leveling up is maybe a new job, new contract, new business, something like that. It's playing out in the sphere more of Aries than anything. Something new but something ambitious. So let's have a look and see what is within your control is the inner journey. Okay, so this is saying, what's in your control? You're a very, very good person to deal with sort of conflict and, and ideas because you've got these two perspectives. You're able to sort of move through what could be intellectual battles and actually pick up what needs to be done and move on. You're quite detached when you need to be. So that's one of the things that's within your control. It is saying at the moment that while you are, as I say, a very unique person, there is there is the need probably to find the people that understand you and the people that you can work with. You you need to find your tribe, I think. You may well be the leader in the tribe, I think, but you need to find the tribe. With the Nine of Pentacles reversed, it's like you're not going to make as much of this or bring in as much sort of money, material benefit or whatever if you're just on your own. So I feel like you are in an organisation or need to be in an organisation working with other people, I think you're likely to be a leader or if you're not now, you're likely to eventually be a leader in that group, but it is within a group. You're, it's something about the, your capacity to balance things that is what is valuable within this group. It's what is necessary within this group. And it's certainly doing that will bring, you will get rewards. You will find the right people. Your capacity to really know what's going on, quite frankly, nobody, nobody can, you know, pull a fast one on you for very long you would you would know and you would be able to see it and and deal with it you know and and kind of deal with it short shrift too but it's very just saying you're a little bit undecided at the moment about who you want to connect with and part of that is because you've worked out sort of some of the material things here and the kind of what is the detail and what's the high level perspective you haven't yet worked out what's the creative or, or passionate side of it you haven't You've almost looked at this forensically at both levels, if this makes sense. You are ready to level up because you can get to the depth and you can get to the height. What you're not necessarily yet connecting with and Spirit says will help you is what does this mean to you on a kind of passion level? Don't be too detached. You know, like make sure that, that and don't be too analytical. It's sort of like getting that into balance. That That is within your control to do. So let's see what the external factors are around your leveling up. Okay, 
So this is definitely suggesting maybe one of the reasons that you're not sure about who you want to connect with is that I think that you've maybe had some situations from the external sort of world where you've, you haven't felt that connection in terms of passion, vision or whatever. You haven't felt that you could collaborate because it wasn't quite the right connection. This may have been with one particular person with the Queen of Pentacles or it may be the Queen of Pentacles is an energy that's coming in. If you're open to it, that will help you. It sort of depends. If you... If you were working with or had a boss or had a colleague that might fit the kind of Queen of Pentacles sort of earthy energy, very reliable in many ways, but in this case not not with the same vision as you, then that may not have worked and you know that and that's had an impact on things. And if that's the case with the world, that's over. That's not something you have to worry about going forward. Just don't don't take that as the template because there is the potential coming through. If that doesn't relate, then I suspect that you have felt that you haven't found the right people who really got you because you're an unusual intellect, I have to say, an unusual level of strength on that. So it's going to be a little bit harder to find the right people. But but the things that weren't working, that's coming to an end. Don't, again, don't, don't dismiss when possibly someone who who actually brings a really good energy for you, I think. If if this is somebody external coming in that, that you know, you're not going, oh, that's not the person that, that I didn't connect with, then it's like you're very emotional and very intellectual. This person's very grounded. So there may well be saying that, you know, getting that kind of balance, like a midway point between the two ends of the spectrum that you're operating on and which is what is making you level up is almost like the the sort of balancing point of the fulcrum, if that makes sense. I get this sort of sense of someone earthy that could actually help. This is why Spirit is saying you need to understand that you will do better if you connect with someone who maybe brings a different energy in. And you of all people would be able to recognise that. Okay, so let's have a look firstly with the heart code oracles and some of the energies around relationships, lifestyle and career. Then I'm going to be using some other oracles to look a little bit more at what's within your control and then also what is externally coming in for you. So firstly, a relationship energy around this leveling up process. So if it's challenging, it's something to be aware of to, to break through. And again, you of all people will be able to do this. If it's positive, then it's something to leverage. So we have twin flame. Okay, so some of you may be bringing in a very significant relationship. I don't think this is primarily what this is talking about, though. I do think that there's something, as I say, a cause or something like that that you're doing. But I think that somebody is coming in that is significantly connected to that, a soul relationship on some level. So, And someone who's more at your level, because there aren't probably that many people who are. So so that's going to be around. And again, don't, don't keep yourself so separate. Don't think nobody could be like you, because there will be people like you. And trust, yeah. When this happens, trust. Because, of course, twin flame relationships can be a little bit complex, a little bit challenging. They're usually something that needs to heal. I feel like it's the balance for you of, of these two extremes. So it's someone who's sort of more in the centre of it, but who possibly, therefore, doesn't feel able to get to the depths or get to the heights, sort of like if it's feeling a bit stuck. I'm getting a sort of sense like someone who's very grounded that you actually expand their mind and they ground you. That seems to be the energy that I'm feeling about this. So it is important. I do think most of this is around, as I say, career or a cause, but there's a significant relationship around this as well. And we have for lifestyle, reputation and reluctance. Okay, so you may be reluctant to fully step into this. I think you've built a very strong reputation for your capacity. I do get sort of sense of people like who are excellent barristers or political operatives, all that kind of thing. But I think that there is, and I think you've probably built that reputation being the sort of the, the sort of maverick, the iconoclast, the genius in the room sort of thing. But I think this is connecting to this. Don't be reluctant and don't think it shifts your reputation to connect with the right person. That's the next part. That's part of this levelling up. So let's see it on the career level. Okay. We've got one of the sort of like core cards from this. So change starts by looking into the mirror of your soul. I feel like this person is the mirror of your soul. It's like it's like a photo negative. It's like different extremes that they balance and ground in the center. And authentic. Yeah, being authentically you. 
but understanding that there is a mirror, there is somebody, there is something that is going to help you take this to even further levels. You're going to level up anyway, but I think it's going to then bring in something that, that escalates it even more. So let's look at some oracles. So I'm going to start with a couple of oracles that are looking at other energies that are within your control, sort of spiritual and energetic things. And then I'm going to use a couple of fortune-based decks. So the decks that are more traditionally thought of as fortune-telling because I feel that can pick up the energy from the external. So firstly, internal to you, energy that you can use as you level up. Acceptance. I think there's a lot about accepting whatever this relationship is and, and connecting with others, but also accepting yourself, accepting what is what is different about you, which is, as I say, this sort of dual approach. It's almost like having two personalities. I don't think you actually have two personalities, but there's like two very distinct approaches that you that you meld in some way and sometimes use separately. Accepting that is part of this. And pleasure. That's interesting. That came up for another one. Enjoying what you're doing. Because, yeah, if you're going really to the depths in the shadow and then you're going very detached, maybe that's what this energy is. If that's not a person, and I think even if it is a person that didn't work out with, I think there's another grounding energy coming in. They may help you connect. So even though this is internal, you have to be open to enjoying it, in, enjoying the energy that's coming through. Not feeling it all has to be about the cause. Okay, let's get some color goddess energy as well for you about what is within your control. Lilac, immaturity, innocence, youth. So you're not immature at all. Maybe there is something about this where you are helping those who are younger, you know, mentoring and so forth. Maybe there's something in that sort of energy or potentially getting back to where you felt innocent of things because you're very calibrated to analyzing everything. So there might be an energy in this part that gets you to accept things and have pleasure of going back to what was it that you wanted when you were young? What sort of the, the sort of sense of what you wanted as a youth, that kind of energy. And then we have plum, which is choices, decisions, and options. Oh, actually, what this is telling me, because you are, you are, as I say, this sort of unique person who sort of can look at both levels. There can be an issue sometimes about making choice under those circumstances. People who are very emotionally driven will come from the heart and they'll operate on that level. People who are very intellectually, it's all about whether it's logical. If you are looking from both perspectives, this might be why this grounding energy is necessary. In making decisions for yourself and really taking advantage of this, this very special way that you can look at the world, sometimes you just need to go back to what you would have pleasure in and accept that that's the case. What, what, you know, not always look for the shadow in the room, equally not always say, does this fit some bigger cause? You need to free yourself up to make decisions a bit. And this is part of leveling up, of being able to bring that balance in. Okay, so let's have a look at external energy. So as I say, I'm using two different, more traditional fortune decks for that. So this is just to sort of see what other energy externally is bearing upon your leveling up. So we've got the Queen, love and prosperity. Yeah, there's definitely love coming in. If it isn't already here, it definitely is. And they're connected somehow to prosperity for you. you you're going to do well anyway. You could do well on your own. You actually could. But to really level up and really, really move forward, there's somebody else, that, like the two of you together, like a power couple sort of energy. Then we've got the serpent, a sly and subtle approach is needed. Yeah, I think most of you are in an environment where you need to be very, this is where your genius actually comes in and is really useful. You're in a complex environment dealing with complex issues. But I feel like you've got the wisdom of the serpent there. And the unicorn, good fortune and friendship. So yeah, there's good people coming in. And the unicorn, you know, they often say, you know, the unicorn is like the unusual thing. I think you're in such a complex and probably quite political and tense environment in one way or another that it might feel unusual to have that. And you might have been disappointed before, but it is definitely coming in. And it's likely to be a little bit more than a friendship, I think. But there's likely to be friends as well. So let's also get a couple of Lenormand cards for any other external fortune energy for you. Sky. Okay, so there's something that you let go of in the process of doing this. I think it's what didn't work. And I think it's also letting go of the reins a little bit, you know, enjoying yourself, accepting that, that you know, they're working with others or doing whatever this is, is, is not losing the purity of your vision or the, the clarity of your 
forensic analysis. There's something that you're going to let let go. Many of you may leave a workplace or something like that, get a much better offer because this is about leveling up or start your own business or something like that with that. It's an energy of letting the old out that is not working for you anymore. And tree, okay, this is this is great blessing. So the tree basically brings blessings and is a very powerful card on that level. So externally, there is a lot moving towards what you want to do and the growth that you want to have. So even if you're leaving something behind, something much better is blooming in its place. So it's, it's definitely you know, confirming that we are talking about leveling up here. All right, so to finish off, I just want to draw you a goddess card for some other energy around your leveling up and then the astro chakra cards to bring it all together. So you've got Ain, radiance. My presence has an impact on the lives of those around me. Yeah, you definitely do because as I say, you're very unusual. And there is a radiance to that of balancing those things. And I think that radiance will also bring in, as I say, this important relationship if it isn't already there. And if you are already in an important relationship, there's something that the two of you will do together, bringing your different skills that is levelling up for both of you. Okay, to so finish off, I'm just going to draw three Astro Chakra cards. Heart Chakra, not surprised. There's something very much about love in this for you. Oh, God, heart chakra again. Heart chakra again, yeah, okay. With twin flame, with all this sort of stuff, there's something. It's, it's really interesting because the overall leveling up feels like it's career, personal brand, creativity, and very much at the end of a cause or a social thing or something like that. But what it's really bringing and leveling up is love, and it's like having Uranus, Mercury, and Pluto <laughs> conjunct, which is a powerhouse around all energies for the heart. It's talking about reconnecting self acceptance and gratitude, getting to the pleasure element. But to me, like Uranian genius coming in, Mercury being able to communicate at Pluto, a transformative energy. And that's a beautiful distillation of this balance I've seen because it's like that combination of the depth and the height, that's the thing that's the true engine of transformation. So there's something about your leveling up, both for you, self-transformation, but I think for others. But it very much comes from the heart and it very much brings love or, or heightens love as well if you're already in that sort of a relationship. So, wow, I think it's a really lovely way to level up and a really interesting energy that you personally bring to it. So I hope that that resonates for you, Paul, too. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 3, to your reading. So we have some cards around sort of icons that might give a sense of the area in your life that this leveling up is occurring. We have some spiritual energy and also some astrological energy. You're interesting. You are very much, it's sort of like a combination of sort of creative expression and spirituality this group so the leveling up is in either sort of spiritual practice creativity or some combination of both what's really interesting to me is we start off say with free spirit here and then we have freddie mercury and rupaul and both freddie mercury and rupaul are very were very well known or are very well known in i think rupaul's still with us around very individualistic very different very open to showing all their colors and, and that kind of thing, incredibly fashionable, incredibly aesthetic around what they do, very, very skilled with what they do. But there's a freedom energy that's very strongly across all of that. And, and then we have the air. So you are a free thinker. You are not going to be constrained. Part of what you're leveling up is that you own what you believe and you own who you are. And that is part of what's really going to, to make your impression in the world and take you to whatever next level it is, whether it's creatively, spiritually, career-wise, you are really coming into your own and there's a sort of a diversity of what you can do. The freedom brings a diversity in what you do and also a great comfort in yourself. So it's really interesting we have the masculine card then with RuPaul and Freddie Mercury because I think these are both people who have given us a different sort of view about what it is to be masculine. You know, like it, it really is, is all around the diversity of that sort of thing and, and the understanding of the masculine principle, which is more about self-starting, action, that kind of thing, and, and really owning who you are. So, so there's that energy very much around you. You very much, your leveling up is also about owning who you are and that freedom and defining what that is and bringing in a diversity of skills and approaches to do it. 
So that's very strongly kind of like the air with the masculine there. But you also have a spiritual mission because we've got the Lemurian soul here. So you're an old soul. You're potentially very much a starseed soul as well too, but certainly from you know one of the very early uh, civilizations on this earth and a very, very spiritually related one. So there's definitely a spiritual mission and you are on that. You know, you won't veer from that. So it's sort of like it's your touchstone spiritually. Who you are, what you think your mission is, is your touchstone while you take a lot out into the world of what you believe, who you are and so forth. So this could be someone who is creative, someone who is doing something with a cause on some level. It could be how you relate to people. This could be about love. It could be about owning who you are and who you love and that sort of thing. But there's a spiritual connection as well. So whether it's overt or whether it's something that is just an underpinning to everything you do, you're not here just for a good time. You're here to actually achieve something and you're very, very focused on that. And this leveling up is taking you to that next level. But you are also someone very unique, very diverse, very different, very free. People can't, can't sort of pin you down and make you just do what the conventional wants of you. So very, very interesting energy. I think that you, you definitely are going to sort of do something new and something different and, and very, very sort of overt and out in the world but it's got a spiritual underpinning if you're not working in spiritual sides of things then there's a spiritual underpinning to it there's a lot of ancient knowledge within you so let's see what tarot wants to tell us so we're going to sort of start with just some more information on what this leveling up is and then we're going to look at what's within your control what's internal to you and then also what's external what impacts on you that isn't so much in your control around leveling up so firstly, a little bit more about what you're actually going to be doing or how you are levelling up at the moment. Okay, so many of you, and this might be why I'm sort of getting a sort of sense of sort of relationship and the free spirit. Many of you, part of leveling up is probably coming off the back of a broken heart or something not working out emotionally, something not being reciprocal in energy and so forth. I'm getting for some of you, your energy is so high and so strong and so free that some people might not understand that. For some, they may feel that you wouldn't commit or they feel insecure around you. Like you could be sort of someone who's very charismatic and people feel a bit insecure as a result of it. But it looks to me as though that, that your leveling up comes as a result of something not you know, emotionally working out or potentially career-wise also with the six of coins reversed. With the five of coins reversed, you have been feeling lonely or feeling detached from that, but you're starting to come out of that. But the, but the impetus to this to really be fixed and stand firm in what you believe and what you do and who you are is coming from something that was a disappointment and making some decisions about moving on from that with, with the death card here. Page of Wands, the minute I put it down, I thought, yeah, this is creative. Most of you are very, very creative. And creativity is many different things. It doesn't have to be being an artist, a singer, a painter or whatever, but many of you may be that. But it could be you as your own creation and having a really strong sense of that, having been disappointed by something. But you're ready. Why the leveling up is coming is you're ready to sort of come out of that and connect. And so there is a real thing for you, actually, Pile 3, as I say, about, about how free you are and finding the people who can deal with that, people who are equally free, who who want to be with you, not, not to be committed because yeah, that's just what you do, but because they really just want to be with you and, and you vice versa. There's that sort of energy because you are such a free spirit. And that is part of what makes you successful and it's part of what is, is what's going to be you stepping up and leveling up and finding that kind of connection. So let's see what's within your control, what you internally can do around this leveling up process. Okay, so this is picking up the sort of spiritual side of things. So like the Four of Swords and the, and the High Priestess, you definitely should commune in with your spiritual side. Whatever is drawing you spiritually, pay attention to that. Give yourself time out and so forth. That is a real source of information and inspiration to you and strength to you. And, it's, and it connects you to whatever your mission is. 
you've actually you are primed for this with the world card coming up again this is saying that you are primed you have finished with something and i think it's something that was emotionally disappointing with the moon reversed that suggests that you heard things you understood things things came out to the surface you saw what was really going on and i think that you are understanding something about yourself and how your very vivid image energy and free energy it does have an impact understanding that in some way and calibrating that with your spiritual sort of side and your spiritual beliefs but you are meant to be your own boss you are meant this is the the masculine energy coming out again you are meant to be going forward with something you are meant to be powerful in the world in some way and coming into your own power by understanding that you can let go of the things that didn't work out and you can really connect to your spiritual mission that's what's going to drive your you're leveling up so let's see what's externally happening that is either helpful or a challenge around it okay so interesting Firstly, there will be people who are on have your vision and want to sort of move with you and travel with you. That is coming in. If it hasn't already, that is coming in. But you have they, you have definitely dealt with some disappointments. Some of you may even have like left a family or something like that or felt detached from family with Ten of Cups reversed. Certainly with the Page of Cups reversed too. There is, there is something a little bit broken hearted in some of this for you. Some of you have gone through that. If it's not as literal as a broken heart from a relationship, it may be that you felt for a while detached. The freedom and the, the, the self-determination might have detached you a bit from your own spiritual connection. So you're recalibrating that. You're moving through that. You will have some choices. This leveling up has actually some material choices around it. It could be around a choice of jobs, a choice of sort of business partners, a choice of creative projects. And there is a shadow with some of it with the devil. So there is there are some choices that would want to constrain you. The devil energy is constraining. It can be bondage, which would be anathema to you because you are a free spirit. This is why it's important that this fell with the high priestess. Your inner compass in making this decision must always be how is this going to connect with what I feel is my soul mission? Because it may be something very attractive. It might be very attractive to the free spirit. It may be a job that sounds like you're going to have all this freedom and you're going to be your own boss and everything, but there's something about it that is not in relation to, to what your spiritual purpose is. So if you go back to your spiritual purpose, you won't get trapped in the wrong thing. You'll make the right decision. You may, in fact, have got trapped in something like that before. And it was very disappointing. So rather than a broken heart and you found out there were strings attached to it with the moon reverse that you didn't understand. But you've learned that. But there's still, there's something about you that attracts people who want your skills, your ability, but they want to constrain it and control it. And that it just won't work for you because the combination of your free spirit and with the fact that you actually do have a mission, it just won't work. You need to find the choice that is more aligned to your spiritual pathway. Okay, so let's have a look at how this leveling up impacts your relationships, your lifestyle and your career at a kind of energetic level. Then we're going to get a little bit more with Oracle cards around what's within your internal control and what's also externally operating in this leveling up. So around relationships, consequences. Yeah, there's been consequences around relationships and there's consequences that you need to think about when you're calibrating who to connect with next and bond yeah because there's potentially going to be a good bond a good connection for you but there's equally the ones that become more like bondage you know like more like you know tying up and so forth so it's about understanding that what is the consequences of the connections you make what ones will allow you to be true to your spiritual purpose and to your freedom and have the freedom to do that and what ones are wanting to leverage your your sort of vivid energy but in a way that is too constraining. And that's on both personal relationships and also potentially career. Let's have a look at lifestyle. Reputation. I came up for another of the things. So there's something about your reputation draws this in. Your reputation precedes you. This is why people want to, to sort of get whatever that special source is. They, they, there's something about you that's very compelling. And reluctance. I have a feeling that might have come up together and i do shuffle these a lot in between so i think that that you that you 
go with your inner knowing when you're feeling reluctant it's probably because you should feel reluctant so think about that it could also be that there's an option coming up for you that that would be very different to what you're doing and you're worried about your reputation if you do it but if it feels right spiritually and it gives you freedom and you're not tied to other people's other people's rules then it may be something to really consider let's see what we get with career promotion okay so definitely is leveling up potentially at a workplace or a promotion there are options but i think there's options and it's worth really thinking about that and strengths yeah you have a great you are being promoted because of your strengths it's not somebody doing you a favor i mean maybe that's part of it maybe maybe it's not so much that you have to choose between things but understand if somebody like a manager further up the line is sort of saying to you you know i recognize you i'm going to promote you and therefore they want to they want their their pound of flesh so to speak for what you bring to the table remember if you are moving forward it's because you're strong it's something within you okay so let's have a look with a couple of oracle decks around again the sort of energy around this that is within your control then i'm going to use a couple of classically fortune related decks to look at external energy so internal things the energy that you can choose to use and leverage for your next level up pile three purity yeah the purity of your vision i'm going to put this over here always go back to that because you are you have a fixed purpose you really do and and that's that's got to be the thing that you ultimately are guided by and self-reflection yeah thinking about what are the impacts and consequences of the choices that you make how do you balance your deep need for freedom with a need to actually fulfill your mission that's that's the kind of balance to think about internally to help you navigate this let's get some color goddess energy as well for internal energies that you have coral refresh regeneration renewal yeah something's coming through you something you've gone through a disappointment definitely but this is bringing through something new for you something more energized and i think it's really interesting i think it's really tilting towards freddie mercury there because it's a similar color palette in the background there there's something about the energy that he brought to things the diversity that he brought to things and so forth that that is a good indication to you of of how you will level up and we have sienna plans preparation training so once you know you start to plan train like and that's interesting because if you're very freedom oriented sometimes you, you don't necessarily want to go through formal qualifications training or whatever you like to just do it yourself i'm very freedom oriented so i know this energy so this is saying do do the work like don't 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 try and take a shortcut if somebody says oh i recognize you and you can just move up make sure that you are ready that you've planned and you've made sure it's part of this regeneration process for you okay so let's have a look at a couple of fortune decks for some other external energies that are impacting on this leveling up process either challenges to be aware of and conquer or things that you can leverage so earth utilize logic reason and common sense yeah this is about the plans it's it's not your general nature to do this i don't think and as i say i say that with loving kindness because it's probably not mine either but but there's something about that earth your energy because that that kind of that will be expected of you and that will put you in the driver's seat the gate a barrier keeps you from your goal okay so something this is the thing that's been disappointing so until you work that out and i think it is about this devil card it's about where you maybe compromise or you let other people supposedly open the gate you're meant to find the way to open the gate yourself and it's meant to be connected to your your kind of mission and once you do that that gate is likely to open but while you are doing what other people expect of you then then you know it won't get to the point that you want it to get you'll still level up this is about leveling up but there is there is more to come and the king authority and diplomacy yeah this is meant to be you stepping into your power and who you are but you may have to be diplomatic about it there are other people around this that are like gatekeepers literally so you have to find your way around that let's use a couple of cards from the lenormand deck as well to see what other external or fate energy is around this mountain big things 
big things that that could stand in your way big things that you can shift and move like the mountain is always about big things big journeys big quests and so forth there is something big and i think this connects to whatever your spiritual purpose is so you have a big mountain to climb here i think it's basically working positively for you but you do need to move into your authority to use it and dog there are some loyal friends around you so there are some really good people that you can talk with that you can bounce ideas off don't feel while you have to make some of these decisions yourself because of the free spirit don't don't underestimate the benefit of the wise counsel of friends okay so to finish off i'm going to draw a goddess card energy for you and then we're going to use the astro chakra cards just to bring it all together So your goddess energy for your leveling up is ye, the creatrix. Live in the flow of your ideas, birthing them into life. Ancient sort of earth, earth, mountain. There's something very solid about what you're going to do. And I think this is also that fixed energy. This sort of like, you know, you know what you're actually meant to be here to do. You know, on a kind of spiritual level, you get it. And you're meant to create something come out of this. And both Freddie really Mercury and RuPaul, highly creative people. There is something creative in here in that freedom. But there's also something very, very ancient. And this is the Lemurian thing. There's something very ancient you're bringing through as well. Okay, let's use three Astro Chakra cards just to bring it all together. Third Eye Chakra. Solar Plexus Chakra. And the sacral chakra, there's the creativity for you. So this is this is the connection to your Lemurian soul, your sort of psychic connection or whatever. Very much pay attention to dreams and your intuition. Venus is there, so there's a love for what you do. There is a love for what your mission is, and your intuition will guide you. That's your that's your North Star when you're not sure, when you're around these more sort of earthy, practical, and possibly controlling energies. That helps you come into your power with the solar plexus, with Jupiter, with wisdom, and operate with honor. See, this is the thing. Because you have a spiritual cause, you have to operate with honor. It's not just a free-for-all to do whatever you want. You know that you actually have a purpose. And that takes you to your creative instinct with Uranus in the sacral chakra. Your individuality, your freedom, because Uranus is very much a free energy is meant to bring some form of change, not just for you, but for others. Shift the dial on something. This is part of what you are stepping up, leveling up to do, to create something new. But as I say, sort of paradoxically, also something that's very ancient in its depth. So I hope that that resonates for you, Pile 3. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments about it, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 4, to your reading. So we have a couple of cards here that use sort of icons to look at sort of energies around how you're leveling up, some spiritual energy and also some astrological energy. And my feeling when I look at these cards is that you are leveling up in a way that brings a very profound message to the world, to your your circle, your social circle, your workplace, whatever it is, about what it is to be fully creative, fully open, fully in your heart, in all its levels and its most intimate levels. For some of you, this may be about a significant relationship, but if it is, it sort of is preceded by a significant relationship with yourself. And it is very much about what your life purpose is. It's very interesting. So we've got Maria Calais and Kim Kardashian West. And to me, that feels like the gamut of what is is the feminine shown in the world stage from the sort of very much perfectionist, the operatic, the, the pure sort of energy. This is not anything I'm saying here is nothing about the people concerned. It's more about some of what they're kind of iconic, what they're known for is. So the, this sort of sense of the pure, the sacred almost. And then with Kim Kardashian West, more the glitz, the glamour, the profane, if you like, sacred and profane, which is not to say I'm not I'm not saying anything against Kim Kardashian at all with that. I'm just trying to look at the kind of energies that we're talking about here. The the energy that is about the art on a very pure sense and about understanding how to promote the art, but both extremely powerful feminine figures and then on the spiritual thing we have the divine feminine here flowing in the the rhythm of the divine heart your cosmic gateway to all creation there's something about the divine feminine with you you don't have to be a woman for this to fit it's about creativity it's about beauty it's about receptivity 
and it's about being in the heart with heart magic and very very powerful sort of spiritual magic that you have as a result of that which i think you brought in from other lives with the south node north node here you're meant to be communicating something about this. So for some of you, this step up will be around how you promote yourself in a way, how you present your particular image, which I think is a sort of a balance of sort of the purity of form in whatever you're doing with the understanding of the industry that you're in, if that makes sense. The understanding of the world. What does this world want now? What do you need to communicate to this world? But how do you stay true to your course as well? And there's a huge amount of depth and intimacy to what you do here with the eighth house. So for some, it will play out in a very significant intimate relationship. That could very much be the case. Balancing that and where you are very much showing, as I say, that divine feminine side of the, the thing, regardless of whatever your gender is, what, regardless of whatever your preference is. But others, as I say, it's like creating that image in the world at whatever level it is and following a very strong karmic path a very strong inner knowing about that and with the eighth house which is scorpio's house you know going to the depths being very very able to look at the light and shade about what's going on and then communicate it communicate it brilliantly so for some of you you may write you may sing you may do something that is in the field of communication you may literally work in communication there's all those energies. And for some of you, I feel a bit of the trickster energy of Mercury as well too. The god Mercury was a bit of a trickster. And there's an energy here of being able to, to shift, to shape shift, to be able to be what you need for the environment that you're in. That is not trickster in a bad way at all, any more than I think Mercury is a trickster is a bad thing. But it is that capacity to shape shift, to understand the core of the thing underneath whatever the way is that you show it to the world. So I, I just feel that this is very creative i feel like it could be around a significant relationship or how you relate in general and i think that there's a very strong sort of receptive and heart-based energy here that is around how you level up in whatever way this works career or otherwise so let's have a look with tara let's try and get a little bit more specific information to see how this is playing out then we're going to ask tara after that what is within your control internally and what is externally impacting your leveling up so firstly, a little bit more detail for Pile 4 Spirit on how they are levelling up. Okay. So the interesting thing here is it almost feels to me like the reason that spirit has brought up all this sort of feminine energy is because what you have been focusing on is more the sort of divine masculine. We've got the king of pentacles right in the center. We've got the eight of pentacles, this sort of feeling of building skills and so forth. King of pentacles achieving something. I think many people in this, in this group will have achieved something in their career or materially. The next step up is, you know, how do you take that to the next level? And it's about not focusing as much on the sort of formal qualification and skills and the material side of things. That's a little bit tying you up at the moment. It's, it's limiting what you do. It's about opening your heart. But it is saying that you don't necessarily show that, that side, the queen of, it's so much queen of wands energy actually in, in the original part of this spread that, but you haven't yet fully opened this up. It could be that through a significant relationship you do it with the Knight of Cups, but this could also be being in, at one with your own heart as well. And it is maybe moving away from the, your next step up is looking more at the divine feminine side of things because maybe you focused a lot on the divine masculine. And so, as I say, very likely to be playing out in your career, but it could also be that the step up is sort of moving into a, a love relationship, having established yourself in your career, starting a family, having established whatever you wanted to do materially and being able to do it. There is something around the feminine that is your next step up. But as I say, you've just got a little bit trapped, Spirit is saying. That's why it's important to bring this energy in, all of which is within you, particularly at the deep levels and start to communicate with that. But it's just, yeah, you've had a focus. Maybe some of you came from families that were very business and career oriented. And so that's what you focused on. And now it's about well, what's the creative principle here? You need, you know, starting a family, 
in in sort of like the more creative sort of aspects, more divine feminine aspects around whatever you do in your career, in bringing you love in. It's there's something around that. It's a shift. So that's what it's actually saying. It's that you have all this within you, but you have suppressed it a bit. You're now bringing that out, like saying that's okay. I've got everything I need there. I can focus on this side. So let's see a little bit more about what you can do internally then to to really bring this next level for you. Okay, so this is a big shift for you. Spirit is recognizing it's a big shift for you. You're very comfortable in in the sort of earthy elements, in in what is material. Very, very good at that. Very, very accomplished. Spirit is saying not putting as much emphasis on it again with the Page of Pentacles reversed. I mean, often when I see the Page of Pentacles reversed, I think I feel like saying you need to do some business planning. You're not business planning, but I actually think in this case it's saying that that's not what you need to focus on. That you you do that naturally. It's not where you need to put your energy. You need to look at what is under the surface emotionally. What's in the eighth house? It would be interesting for some of you, if you know your chart, to know what's in the eighth house or if there are any significant planets transiting in your eighth house at the moment because there's something that is coming up from, from underneath. And I think this is this sort of, as I say, the kind of more feminine energy, the love energy. You, many of you may have, as I said, put love aside while you've concentrated on your career. What you can do now is allow yourself to look into that and work out the patterns of why. You, you will be very good at doing it. It is there. With the Queen of Cups, it's always been there. But the King of Pentacles energy has kind of been the dominant one, I think. The Queen of Cups needs to come out from her hiding place with the four of swords reversed. And it's a major change. This is a major change for you. Some of you, this is going to be something like having been very focused on a career and now you want to start a family, for instance. And so it's a major change. Or it could be that, you know, you've, you've been following a corporate line and you want to be an artist and you want to be a creator on that sort of level. And it's a major change. Being going with the flow of the change, releasing yourself from the patterns that you did before, that will be that will be what will be the most helpful thing you can do, accepting it and having the confidence that you'll be just as good at this. Because I think, as I say, like the, the kind of material things are almost second nature to you. But this other side is also, you're also good at it, just allowing the change to occur, not tying yourself up. So let's see what the external world will be doing around this levelling up. So you're going to get a bit of a push-pull from the external world, I have to say. Like, there are going to be some people who are with you, who absolutely see this as necessary and who are with you. And one may be a significant relationship coming in. you no longer sort of being alone. You're going into that if you've been alone. If you haven't been alone, then, you know, there's a good friend or a good relationship around you that, that is going to be backing what you're doing. So that's definitely there. And there is a similar sort of like a, a sense of, yes, the creative side needs to be brought out, focusing on it. There's, there's a cheerleading squad definitely there. And they're an interesting cheerleading squad because they're pragmatic. They, they, they give you the time to do what you need to do. They're not going to sort of rush you or expect an outcome instantly. So if you were in a workplace and you were doing something that was very financial, for instance, and you wanted to do something that was more around communications and PR, then it's like there's a boss or a team leader or something who who is saying yes you know explore that i will support you and you can take your time doing it that's just an example so there are people like that there are other people however are a bit frightened by what's new coming through like you are there are lots of new ideas and new opportunities are coming through so you will see chances to do this but there are some that with the nine of of wands reversed are a little bit frightened of that who kind of may sort of say you sure you want to do that you're so good at what you do etc so there's a few naysayers who may try and delay or change what you're doing and i think spirit would be saying just be aware that that you are much more ready to do this than you think and you will have people around you who can support you so don't shy away from this opportunity to level up just because it's different in some way okay so let's have a look at how this impacts relationships, lifestyle, and career. So this could be positive energies that are helping the level up, or it could be challenges you need to be aware of as you level up. So firstly, around relationships. 
Commitment. Yeah, some of you, some of you, this is maybe you may commit to starting a family, commit to getting married, commit to a new relationship, all of which is taking you more into this sort of divine feminine side of energy to, to balance off what feels like a very strong career focus. So there's definitely, definitely strong relationships and good relationships around you, I think. And authentic, yeah. Being authentic to who you are, being authentic in relationships, and there are authentic commitments, authentic friends. So don't be afraid on that level. If there are people who can't deal with, they're afraid of your change, then then you know maybe it's time for them to move on. You you will bring in or have around you the right people anyway. Let's have a look at lifestyle. Mirror. That's interesting. And solution. See, why I say it's interesting with mirrors, if you think about mirror, we see the reverse of ourselves when we look in the mirror. So, and this is almost like, this is this is the leveling up. This is going from one mode, which was very divine masculine, into one mode that is very divine feminine, in whatever level it is. But remembering the mirror is still showing us our reflection. It's still true to us. It's just the mirrored reflection. So I think there's something in understanding that you can have both these lifestyles. And that they mirror each other. They're both part of you. They're not as different as they seem. And that provides you the solution. How do you how do you have both in your life? And you then kind of can at will work out which you're going to focus on at what time. Because there's something about the creativity that you need to focus on now. Okay, let's see around career. Self-worth. Productivity. Yeah, okay. You do very much. You're so productive. You're as productive as hell, basically. Anybody who had you working for them would be a lucky person indeed. Any business that you were connected to would be lucky. You've kind of got the Midas touch for all of that, definitely. And a lot of your self-worth has come from your productivity. This is why it's important to see this leveling up as doing a different way of being productive. It's picking up this mirror energy. It's like you don't have to just say, well, all my self-worth is on the success I've had so far. Your self-worth can be built by productivity in different ways. <clears throat> okay, so I want to use a couple of oracle decks to get a little bit more information around what is internally within your control energetically. Then we're going to use a couple of fortune, fortune telling type decks around external energies as well. So firstly, some energy within you that can help this leveling up acceptance it's interesting that came up for another reading accepting that this is part of you accepting the change going with the flow of the towel which is a positive energy for you if you go with it accepting this is just the the next the next choice the next level the next thing and purity that also came up but in a different one so you've got like a couple that have come across a couple of different ones so some of you may have gone to more than one reading Purity is the purity of your vision, the purity of who you are, the purity of your heart. This is actually, I think, partly leveling up to reconnect with that. It doesn't mean that you've necessarily done anything that was sort of sus or anything. It's just that that I think this is getting back to the purity of you in balance, the divine feminine as well as the divine masculine. Okay, let's have a look at, speaking particularly of feminine, a colour goddess card. So feminine energy connected with colour as as another part of looking at what is within your control, what is within you to step up with. Sky, faith, flight, limitlessness. Yeah, understand that you're limitless. Understand that that success and self-worth and productivity which you've had is not everything, it's not all. There, It's just the next step that you're going to go through. <clears throat> I'm also getting for some of you, look up into the sky, I'm getting like... Look into clouds, see if you see something there. That's just very specific, but there's there's a message there for some of you. And sapphire, knowledge, learning, organization. So again, I think this is giving us a dual message because I think it's this this will all give you new knowledge, new learning, all that kind of thing by focusing on this other side. But I think it's also saying don't be limited by that which you've learnt, studied, you know, the skills you've had. Don't box yourself in. You are limitless. Okay, so let's use the two fortune cards to see what other external energy may be impacting on this. And so if it's a challenge, it's something to be aware of. And if it's a blessing, then it's something to leverage. But this is sort of external energies around it, or fortune energies around it. 
the caduceus you will receive news from afar okay so something some some information's coming in to actually help you with this so don't feel that you've got to kind of do it all on your own there there is information coming seduction passion and romance away oh okay so they did look like there could be could be a relationship coming out for this so for, for some of you it's stepping into that and as i say calibrating that and that's pretty exciting that looks kind of nice and the oracle seek wisdom and guidance from elders or from your own inner knowing from your heart from your intuition and so forth so and you know readings like this i suppose could be helpful in sort of seeing how this works out let's see what the lenormand deck has as fortune energy around this for you dog there's good friends there are good people around you people that you can rely on people that you can trust and who will see what you're doing and want to support it good and also a good relationship or good family if that's if that's what you're sort of like stepping up to to build in some way and lady okay and there's a woman that's going to be important to this in some way or somebody who identifies with feminine because that's this is external it's it's and again it could be a good friend a good female friend and again it doesn't matter really what um, gender you are or whatever but there is something about that and they may in fact help you they may be so i'm getting for instance if, if you were moving into sort of wanting to do something that was more around in a business that you're in was more around the demographic for the the the, the women and the, the people who identify with the sort of the female side of things then there might be someone who is a good friend and who can help you with doing that for instance it's just an example but there's a woman there's a woman that's important likely to be a good friend okay so to finish off i want to pull a, a goddess card from you from the terraqui oracle so a goddess energy around this and then we're going to use astro chakra cards to bring it together so what is a goddess energy around your leveling up very appropriate to get a goddess for you given the nature of this this shift in you mama Wati, adaptability spend time near water admire its strength tranquility and intensity acknowledge these qualities within yourself acknowledge that yeah feminine energy that flow adaptability this is about shifting this is not this is about finding what you are in the mirror this is about all of you your, your leveling up is is embracing all of you okay so to finish off we're just going to pull three astro chakra cards so the solar plexus chakra the, the throat chakra and the root chakra okay so in the solar plexus chakra you owning your own power it's interesting we have sat in self-discipline here i mean on one level saturnian always feels divine masculine to me to some degree but also i mean it kind of covers both because it is about discipline it's about focus it's about structure it, it may be saying that part of you coming into this power is that discipline to be able to do both of these things to be able to be both things because you're already all over one which i think is the sort of material side of things the, the you know what we think of traditionally as divine masculine the, whatever this is may take a bit of discipline at first to really come into your power but then you can communicate you can communicate the love the emotional the, the the magic of your heart all of that sort of stuff you'll be able to express what you feel a bit more maybe you're going to move into an environment that allows that a bit more than one that you've been in for instance and this is about your true energy because it's interesting we've got mars energy in the root chakra this is this is you have a natural default towards the divine masculine towards being in the world being powerful in the world acting in the world you're not going to lose that through doing this you're not it's just going to give you a more nuanced way to assert that side of things and therefore help you so this is a very fundamental shift from being very success materially oriented into being of the heart in whatever way that means and however it plays out but it is a step up because you will find that you are more than you thought you were so I hope that that resonates for you, Pile 4. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.